the nature of sources is soil. And one question has been raised by me that we could classify soil under natural resources or under uh, slow renewable resources. Let's see what is soil and what are the factors of soil formation and what is the relationship between soil and environment and natural resources and sustainability. So we will take all of this or we will put all of these topics in one bag and we make connection between all of these topics to achieve or to get the result. So, I will talk firstly about soil and landscape and then I will move to the what is the weathering and soil formation and thirdly I will talk about what are the factors of soil formation and then I will talk about what is the equation of soil formation and uh, finally we will go through what is the relation between soil and environment and we will watch some videos. So, Soil, uh, you, you know what does mean landscape. I think most of you, of you have a background of uh, this uh, landscape as well uh, uh, that uh, has been used uh, from the point of view of, of, uh, of art. And then uh, this work is, is uh, or was transformed to, to the science. So soils are very important in environment or in its landscape from the point of view that filter water regulate the flow of rivers, provide a, a habitat for millions of species of organisms. If you remember the old films of pirates, or pirates like this, and then they took a big barrels of, of, uh, of soil with them in the ship, Actually, what is the what what, is, what this give you or give us as as geographer or as a people working with soil? Actually, they are using this barrier of soils to uh, uh, to filtrate the water because you know that the sea water uh, has a, a high amount of salt. So when they add this water to soil they could later on use the filtrated water for, uh, for drink use. So the soil is used to filter water. Also, you know that the, the flow of rivers or so, soil could uh, regulate the flow of rivers or the fluid somehow. And as you know, uh, a tremendous number of organisms and also of, of many, many species are living uh, uh, in, uh, in soil. So, the importance of soil uh, for, uh, for instance, for plants provide water, nutrients and support plants. So imagine that this tree, 30 meters, 40 meters, or uh, any uh, this uh, huge tree, how this tree is, is uh, uh, stable on the soil, and then how the end leaf, 10 meters, let's say, how the end leaf, the 10 meters, took the water from where and the nutrients, so from from the soil. Soil support the plants. Also, serve uh, uh, as a composite bin for the air. This one kind of uh, of recycling of some kind of natural resources. Also, moderate and regulate the distribution of solar solar energy. Also. The other important issue, if you want to know the history of this soil and uh, the origin of this soil, we could use the soil to provide us with the climate, for instance, 2,000 years ago. So we could use the soil as an indicator to know 
uh, or to get an idea about the climate here in Finland, for instance, 2000, 2000 years ago. So it gives us a uh, uh, historical record. Also, as I mentioned, living organisms and parent material uh, from where which is uh, uh, formed in this place or transformed from other place, we will see or and we will know what does mean this uh, parent materials. So, beta uh, genesis or pedogenesis. Uh, or means soil formations. Actually, soil formation, we have two, two uh, kind of, of uh, process. We have systematic process and we have uh, random or unsystematic process. What does mean systematic? Systematic is, it means one direction, we move from step to the other step, so it's called step by step. Or the next step listed the response from the uh, previous step. This is called systematics. But if it's random, random it means that the, the, the process is uh, working in all the directions. And you don't know which direction starts before or started before the other. So the soil process doesn't follow a linear path of development. We will know why. So we have many original of, of soils as, as the base or parent material of soils. Uh, uh, it's formed in the, in the local place or transformed from the transfer from the other place to uh, be in this place. <coughs> so let's talk about the factors, but before everything we have to know what does mean weathering. Weathering breaks down and alters rocks and minerals up or near air surface and divided into, it's divided, the weathering physical we have, we have chemical weathering, and we have biological weathering. As I mentioned, the, the simple word for weathering is break down something. So break down, we have power to break something. I will break this power. That means I have this power affect this device break it and anyway. So we have three kind of of uh, of weathering. We have physical weathering. Physical weathering is any kind of power. Break the rocks. So one example here we have that if the water enters someone between the cracks of the soil and then this water transfer from uh, from water to ice so as you know the size of uh, of size will will expand and it will be expanded and then will affect this rocks however chemical weathering will change or will will uh, will change the the chemical characteristics or properties as a result of interactions uh, of the rocks. And then we have biological weathering, might be some organisms or some plant will affect the rocks. All of these weatherings will uh, affect the rocks and will break down all of these rocks from big parts to smaller parts as kind of partitions. And then the interactions between this part as, uh, as weather parts from rocks and organic material, the soil will be formed as small particles or small granular. 
So the transformation of rock into soil, as we call soil uh, formation, we know we have three uh, types of soil. We have uh, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic so uh, rocks. The first, the first factor of soil formation, well, as I said, is parent material. What does mean parent material? In a uh, very easy word, it's the base of the soil. This base of the soil, the rock. The, all of these ro rocks uh, have been subjected to some kind of weathering and break down uh, or, or all of this rock uh, um, have been broken down by the effect of, of physical, chemical, or uh, biological weathering. So to us, kind of parti pa uh, partition, as I have this, and then I cut it, or I, I break it down for many parts. So let's say this, let's say this power is physical weathering or chemical or uh, or uh, biological. The important thing we will have small granules or we will have small uh, parts. This part, as a result of of, of uh, organisms growing and death of organisms and uh, uh, and plants, will. Uh, will produce a new production. This new production is called soil. So this is parent material is the first factor. The second material or the second factor, the second factor is the climate. So in this part, I think the climate is totally different to this part. So we have here dry climate, however, we have here wet climate. So, we need water as the main uh, important uh, source of the life. So, we have the first factor which is rocks. Might you have the same rocks here and the same rocks here. And the same factors of or, or weathering here and here. However, the climate is different. The, the difference between the climate will create other kind of soil. So let's take the depth of soil. So the, the depth of soil from the rock to the up surface here is different from this species of, of from this climate to this climate and to the dry climate. The other factor we have, as I said, soil organisms. As we said that the soil is a, a support many uh, kind of, of organisms. So you know this, all of these organisms need uh, some kind of power. The source of this power is the food. The food for these organisms is some kind of, of minerals. The source of these minerals are these rocks. So these rocks are habitat uh, uh, or uh, are a source of, of feeding for these uh, organisms. So this is the other factor. We have parent material, climate, and we have soil uh, organisms. All of these factors are working together from many directions. The other factor is the topography. So the topography, if we have uh, difference of relief, from, uh, for instance, this area, the slope of this area is totally different of the slope of this area. So the effect of climate and the organisms and the materials in this area is totally different with this area. That's why the depth of, of soil is different as well. 
The depth of soil, that means the amount of production so, or, 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 or of uh, soil products is different. That much here and that much here. I'm using a very simple word because you are not specialist with the, with the soil science. But I would like to give you this uh, idea about soil as one part of, uh, of natural resources. Time. We need, we, before, before to mention about, about the time as one factor of soil formation, we mentioned that the soil is one of renewable resources. However, is the soil is fast renewable resources or the soil is slow renewable resources? As we say, in renewable or non-renewable resources or the classification of resources, it depends on uh, on the time as a crucial factor. So we have one centimeter per 1,000 years. So one centimeter of soil will be created during 1,000 years. This slow time. However, the fast time 30 centimeter per 50 years. That means the time is a crucial factor and is, uh, uh, is very important. So this one important factor and the soil is uh, one of natural resources factor under the environment. We will connect between the environment and the soil. If we have in soil, we have in agriculture. If we have in agriculture, we have in food. If we have in food, we couldn't survive. That's, that's right. All animals and, and the human beings, all of us, uh, we are supported by, by soil. Because uh, we cultivate the soil and we use these products as our uh, food or our basket for, for human beings as well as for animals. So the other factor is, or, or this, uh, let's say that we have most of our factors that we have, the soil is a function of climate, organisms, relief or topography uh, during the time uh, uh, affect uh, the parent materials. We have actually the scientists later on added other factor. The other factor is a human being. Because the human being or the, the, uh, the, the anthropy uh, affect too much uh, the soil uh, productions or the uh, process of soil through plowing, ripping, battlefields, uh, all, all of these uh, uh, trenches or uh, excavation or pipelines, all of these processes are uh, 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 done by, uh, by, by, uh, by uh, human. So they added the other factors to this equation. So let's see what does mean soil. Soil is nature, complex, dynamic, open system. It's not, what does mean open system? Open system, it means if I will put anything in a glass or in a bottle and I will close it, this means closed system. I could control it. However, I couldn't control the soil. That means soil is open system. And it's formed as a result of reactions and interventions. So reactions and interventions between the impacts of climate, organisms, under a certain topography and a human during time on parent material. This is soil. So the soil uh, the natural body of most soil contain four basic components. Mineral, 
particles, water, air, and organic matter. Organic matter, as well as further, could be divided uh, in subdivisions into humans and roots and living organisms. So this is soil as one part of, of uh, natural resources. Natural resources, one element of the sustainability, which is environment. Let's go to the relationship between soil and environment. These two directions, equation, soil and environment. So corresponding properties of the two systems between, between soil and between environments. Let's take one example. The weathering I mentioned, the weathering of rocks and stones, this is the result of weathering. The result of weathering, as I said, is soil. So the soil is supporting the plant, or supporting the plant, the life of the plant. And the plant supports the life of animals. And also the water, or the cycle of water, is affected by soil. That means it is open system. And the relation between the environment and soil through this uh, two uh, equations that the past continuously from the one to other, from soil to environment, from environment to soil. Let's watch these videos. I went very quickly because of the time. Today we will learn about soil. What is soil? How is it formed? What is its importance to us? We all live on the planet Earth. Have you ever thought, why is the life possible on the Earth? Life is possible on the Earth because of air, water, sunlight and the soil. These are the necessary elements for the life. So, why is the soil necessary? Soil is necessary element for the life as all the plants grow on the soil. We know plants are the primary source of food for all of us. Soil also is the home for many insects and small animals like the rabbit, which makes burrow, or the snake, which lives in holes. Some houses, like the kacha houses, are also made up of mud or the soil. Apart from this, we get many minerals from the soil such as calcium, magnesium, potassium, etc. But, what is the soil actually? How is it formed? He surely will have this question in mind. Who can form such a huge amount of soil? Let us see it in detail. Millions of years ago, the earth was made up only of rocks. There was no soil. Hence, no plants and no life. Slowly, the huge rocks broke into small pieces due to action of rain, frost, heat and the wind. of 
all of these lists is called welding. Welding takes place as rocks are broken down into progressively smaller pieces by the effects of weather.
pair of gel called the basal hill and glacial hill. And the canes formed at the end of the glacier as they were melting, and they're composed of glacial fluvial sands and gravels. The glacial fluvial parent material and basal hill parent material. So just keep this question. How how do you know that uh, 2,000 uh, years uh, ago that this uh, uh, this area was uh, covered by glacier? It was glacier area. Hi, this lesson is on Geology Standard 3.5, The Rock Cycle and Soil Creation. In this lesson, we'll be discussing the three main rock types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rock, the rock cycle, and soil formation. Let's start by looking at the different rock types. There are three main rock types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Igneous is rock formed from a volcano. So it's essentially hardened magma or lava. Sedimentary rock is formed from compressed sediments. So again, these are the little particles of rock that are squeezed together to form a whole new rock type called sedimentary rock. Now, what if we take an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock and expose it to even more pressure and temperature? Well, then it becomes a metamorphic rock. So again, a metamorphic rock is any rock that goes through more pressure and higher temperatures and it's essentially changed into a whole new rock type. So let's look at each one of these now individually. The first one is igneous. And again, igneous is just rock formed from a volcano. So it's essentially hard magma or lava. If you look in the picture below, do you see the white streaks? That shows the way that the lava was moving when it hardened. Okay, now we're on the sedimentary rock. Again, sedimentary rock is a rock formed from compressed sediments. There are three C's to sedimentary rock. Compression, compaction, and cementation. Again, this just means that it's squeezed, compacted, and essentially becomes hardened like cement. Okay, metamorphic. Again, this is just any rock type. Can be igneous, can be sedimentary, it goes through even more pressure and hotter temperatures. This original rock then becomes a whole new rock type. So let's take a minute and do a quick rock type review. Do you remember the three types of rock? Can you define them? How are they different? Now we're moving on to the rock cycle. I realize that this can be really confusing, but if you take the time to look at the pictures, I think everything will start to First off, when we're talking about the rock cycle, it's important to realize that every rock and rock fragment on our Earth is a part of the rock cycle. This rock cycle is a beautiful example of how the Earth recycles everything. Our rocks are constantly changing, although sometimes these changes are so slow that we don't ever see it. I'm sorry uh, to stop here, but uh, may I take just uh, you say that you, you, you should leave uh, uh, 13, um, uh, uh, 13.45, right? So may I take just five minutes? Okay, you agree? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I want to hear, agree. we agree. Yeah, agree. Loudly. Yeah, we agree. We agree. Yeah, we agree. More loud. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's take a, pic take a look at this picture of the rock cycle. Let's start in the lower left-hand corner where it says melting. As you know, subducted oceanic crust eventually melts under the hot temperatures. Well, this melted magma can come up and it can come out of a volcano where it forms igneous rock. Well, this igneous rock, now that it's on the surface of our Earth, is weathered by the rain and the wind, and eventually it's eroded away. Remember, erosion just means movement of those sediment particles. Well, look, it went down the river and now it's into the ocean where it's been deposited in the trench. Well, now it's being pressed down and it's being compacted to form that sedimentary rock. Well, remember, that oceanic crust is constantly subducting those, so now it's going to, that sedimentary rock in our trench 
it's going to carry down and down where it's going to be exposed to more temperature and pressure and becomes metamorphic rock. And the whole cycle begins again. Here's another way of looking at it. This can be a bit more confusing, but I wanted to make sure you understood that it can go in multiple directions. Okay, so you see in each corner you have a rock type, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Well, from each one, you have a couple different options. For example, let's look at igneous. If igneous is eroded, it can become sedimentary rock. Or if igneous is exposed to heat pressure, it can become a metamorphic rock. All right, let's try this again. Let's start this time from metamorphic rock. If metamorphic rock melts, it can become igneous. Or if it erodes, it can become sedimentary. Do you see how every rock type has a choice or a say in what it becomes next? So, just for practice, pretend you're a certain rock type. Let's say igneous, for example. Where do you go from here? What does your future look like? Take a minute and plan out your life story as an igneous rock. Okay, now we're moving on to soil creation. What exactly is soil? Well, really, soil is just organic matter, sediment, air, and water. That's it. So, just for practice, pretend you're a certain rock type. Let's say igneous, for example. Where do you go from here? What does your future look like? Take a minute and plan out your life story as an igneous rock. Okay, now we're moving on to soil creation. What exactly is soil? Well, really, soil is just organic matter, sediment, air, and water. That's it. Some of those are pretty big words, so let's take a minute and break it down. What exactly is organic matter? Organic matter is just bacterial decay of plant and animal matter. Essentially, this is dead plants and animals. What about sediment? Well, again, we talked about sediment. This is just weathered down pieces of rock. So again, organic matter, sediment, air, and water all together makes our soil. Soil is also influenced by other factors, though, including climate, the parent rocks and minerals, and the organisms influencing. So if you take a look at the picture on the right, you see how all those soils look very different. Well, it could be because they're from different climate regions, or they could have different parent rocks and minerals or they could have different organisms influencing them. So again, our rock types, are, or soil types rather, are very different depending on where they're found. So if we look at this picture of global soil regions, you can see how very different the soils are depending on where they're found. I know some scientists can actually look at the composition of soil and pretty much pinpoint where it came from. Soil often is found in layers also. There are different soil types layered on top of each other. This can give us pretty much a history of that region. So it can show changes in the climate, the different rocks, or the organisms affecting them. So again, look at the picture on the right. Do you see how there are different layers? Each layer is its own story. And it's telling the story of whatever happened in that region at that time. Each layer may have a different texture or even a different chemical composition, like it may be made out of something completely different altogether. Here's a beautiful example of a pore sample. So a pore sample is basically like taking a drill and being able to pull out just a small picture of the rock column. And you can see in this pore sample, there are very different rock types depending on the layer. It's pretty interesting, and here's a beautiful history of that area. Well guys, that's actually it for this lesson. If you have any questions, please ask me to make this lesson. Um, I realize some of this can be pretty tricky, but if you take the time to follow through on those pictures, or even the chart, I think you'll be able to make sense of it all. Again, I wish you luck, and don't feel ashamed to come ask us for help if needed. All right, talk to you later. Okay, now we will watch the adapt the next video.
please try to read uh, through uh, hearing this scientific nice song.